more stellifying in that dream, babies. How about this for a little scheme? Oh, yeah, a little, I mean, you go to Athens in just a, a little while, man, say a couple, three days from now. Sun's coming up. Oh, it's rosing up bright. It's about high noon. That's about right, you know. And we got this series of fights on, you know. I mean, all the nations and tribes of the world have agreed to put their uh, most satanic souls up, you know, in boxing matches for the rulership of the earth. And it's come down to these three. And one of them's Putin, and one of them's Rasputin, and one of them's Obama, don't you see? Oh, oh, can't be. <laughs> it's a three-way match, but here's here's the latch, man. As they, you know, the bell rings and they come out of their corners and crowds of billions of people just hold their breath. Because it's a winner-take-all bout, man. It looks like Putin's got more muscles than anybody else in that ring, but then, you know, old Rocky over there, you know, with the fuzzy hairdo, he's a little bit taller, so. And then Rasputin, he's so dang small, but then we all know, you know, the guy's magic. Gotta watch out, you see. Yeah, you didn't know about Rasputin, did you? No. That's the power behind the papal presence of this earth, man, you know. <laughs> Rasputin, you bet. Now, it's not some funny little guy that they wrote some stories about a long time ago. Well, that might be a mere suggestion. It's a mischievous soul that really wanted to stir up some rock and roll and... Well, for a while he felt like he wanted to destroy everybody's heart and soul. Had a real bad attitude, you know. I mean, you know, so he's brought that attitude with him to the ring. But all, but now it's you know things have all changed. You know, I mean, the people started to catch on, and it just I mean it kind of lost its flavor. You know what I mean? It just wasn't so much fun to kick ass anymore. And you know, you could annihilate a million, and it just didn't feel right. You know what I mean? It just it just wasn't as much fun as it used to be, you know, so that's why he'd agreed as the secret dark power of life to finally duke it out, but, you know, I mean, when it really comes down to that, if if vile is going to rule, then violence is the way, and we might as well organize it and save all the bombs and all that crap, you know, all the aircraft and shit to go with it, and all the troops and everybody, I'll just save everybody a whole lot of emotional grief and just duke it out in a boxing ring there in Athens, Athens, Greece, because not Athens, Georgia, but Athens, Greece, the nation of, you know, where Jackie Onassis used to hang out on a hillside villa. Ooh, nice. But anyway, uh, yeah, there, man, you know, and because and, and, and you can't do these things anywhere else in this world. And since this is a monumental knockdown, drag out, three way winner take all, well, you know, the corporate guys couldn't even fight. I mean, they they were dead before they came out of the corners. So that's how it wound up being to this match here, you know. I mean, they the fluffy boys were pro proven to be real fluffy, and they weren't so... I won't even tell you what happened, poor old Dick Cheney. But, you know, it's sad, but, you know, well, we all have our lessons to learn, don't we? Here we are at the big three-way match now where, you know, they're duking it out, you know. Sorry, Canada, I don't know why your guy didn't get in there. He lost somewhere along the way. He should have won. But, you know, secretly, everybody in this crowd, those that are of the betting sort anyway, because not everybody is, but those that, you know, wager and, and think they're going to make gain on it, you know, well, they got it on Rasputin because they know the truth, you know. But, you know, everybody else, you know, they're just betting on whoever their foolish heart says they should vote for, you know, and that's their $3 goes to that party, you know. And Well, if that person wins, they get to participate in the spoils of the earth, right? At least that's the scheme, as, as they dreamt it up in the 3D, because they're such greedy little shits. You know, Rasputin is nothing but pure greed, man. You know, from the word go. An empty black hole, man. You know, a spirit of, like, ununity, man. I'll unionize you all right in my darkness and density and make you just a part of me. Yeah, Rasputin, don't you say? Oh, what a nasty little shit, eh? Yeah, I'd bet on him, too, except no. Well, then again, maybe I would. Maybe that boy would rock me, man. Maybe that boy would show me what the stuff really is, you know. Because what I see happening is the, the bell rings and the fateful match begins and the crowd holds his breath and all the angels above and below too, man. Everybody's hanging on, baby. This is the big one. The knockdown, drag out, to end them all. 
And they walk out fierce, man. Each one a warrior ready to fight to the finish, man. Some of them even got secret spikes in their boxing gloves. They're ready to get really mean, you know. Only somehow or another when they face each other for real in this life, the facade fell, falls away. Even old Rasputin can't hold it anymore, and he starts to laugh and roll on the floor. And somewhere out there in the audience, we hear Tricky Dicky raising a ruckus too, man, because he finally caught on after all this time, man, you know. And of course, his buddy Dick Cheney, well, he lost the match and humbled him so greatly because he couldn't even get in there to tell you the truth, poor guy. You know, he just didn't have it, you know. He can only do it when he's hiding behind a, a telephone and, you know, an, an armed bunch of guards that are paid off big time, you know, to give their lives instead of his and stuff like that, you know, right. But when it came right down to it, all of them, you know, just a bunch of weak little cowards running the other direction except for these three. Now, these three meant it until they got to facing each other. <laughs> and start to roll on the floor laughing, you know, because they realize in that moment everything they ever saw is already there. See, the crowd was there to share their version, their vision of creation, the reality in which truth is living. And they found out that everybody's got it and nobody's lacking anything and nobody needs to fight about anything at all. We're all in this together, one person, one love, one heart. And that's what the triad of that little boxing match proved to this entire earth. And guess what? Where does the inheritance go now if there's no winner, if they're all three winners? Well, guess what? Unity is. Equity lives. In that divine little dream of a boxing ring. In Athens, not Georgia. Yeah. Place where Jackie Onassis used to hang out. You know the place, they like, you know, man, some of the finest wine they ever produced anywhere on earth, of course. And some of the highest thinking until, you know, we got to rocking in this day and age. Now it's everywhere. It's a grand infection, man. And guess what? It is reaching these higher places. Just watch. See, guys, the power brokers aren't so brokered. You know, I mean, they are brokered and they're broke. They're done. They're, they, you know, they're over with and they know it. You'll hear some really unusual confessions come forward in some really unusual ways, I'm sure, in the next few days. About time, wouldn't you say? Yeah, Big Daddy's stepping out of the way and Mama's coming in to play. And guess what? Her name is Mary J. <laughs> now, if that ain't coyote medicine in the morning, I don't know what is, baby. Here you go. Here's the key. Just let you out of the prison, man. Now, let's get to rocking and rolling and strumming and strolling. And, baby, ooh, I need your loving so bad. Right here on that coyote medicine show, your morning wake up call. And so much more on the Hazy Radio Network. Ooh, I love it. the point humanity's been missing all this time, ever since the Wizard of Oz first realized to us, or revealed to us in a form of realization, that we already had what we were looking for and always had it, and that's what got us through to the point where we could finally discover that, don't you know? <laughs> the yellow brick road was a long one, and there were many branches through the forests and trees, let alone them fields of sleepy old poppies, babies. Ooh-wee. Have we been there, done that? We already have, ain't we, babies? See, Oz didn't give nothing to the tin man. Tin man gave something to Oz. Says, here, see my heart, baby. Let it shine bright. Thanks for helping me buff it up, buddy. <laughs> We're all the wizard, man. Each and every one of us. The constant flow of love in life. We can, but you see the point we missed, of course. So we need the good witch to show us, you know. I mean, Dorothy didn't know to tap her heels together and all that until like the good witch come along and saved the day, and it was hanging in the background the whole time, encouraging you along the way and kind of giggling with you. Remember the movie, man? She'd fade in and out every now and then. The good witch could see everybody, man. 
But she was letting you play it out because she knew, she knew you'd have fun in the field of poppies, for one. <laughs> and that the monkeys and so forth needed to be let free. I mean, the flying monkeys, etc. you know. The, the wicked witch's castle had to transform into a crystalline palace of golden light and love hanging there on the hillside, you know, in such a prominent place as all that. We couldn't have doom and gloom hanging in the atmosphere. Now could we, baby? So the good witch helped us get it clear, you know. She's always there, man. That's why now as we're marching down these final steps as the old world around us in the 3D seems to be coming apart in a most disastrous sort of way. <laughs> the gig is up, wouldn't you say? You know, the land of secrets is no more. The land of dreams evens the score because in the dream we see it all. We know it. Innocent eyes are like that, babies. See, these guys were only fooling themselves. They thought they were the eye in the sky. They see everything you do and control it too, right? Uh -uh. We live in the flow. Even in, even when there seems to be control, there's still a flow, babies. And somebody's going with it now, ain't we, babies? And we're all flowing in the same river, the same direction. All experience, in other words, leads to the same place place where you realize not only are you the river, the ocean, the sky, and the earth, and all the life joined in it, but the single little drop of water that makes it all so, babies, I mean, that's what life is. It's all about the rock and roll, man. The musical harmony of your heart and soul, for real, babies, letting it out. That's why we've had all this sweet muzak, the tunage. That's why they're trying to pollute it down nowadays. But don't worry, we're good. We're good, man. We keep moving our bodies in that way and let it be moved by the vibrational harmony and starts to remind us of how we truly live. We're in a vibrational harmony and that dance all the time, baby. And it's just as much fun when everybody flowing together, the whole huge crowd dancing together. You remember those times? Well, they're here now, ain't they? And how we might be sharing it in an individual sort of way, spread across the earth the way we are, but babies, the party's on at our place, and we're actually starting to have fun again. Getting on the run again, getting with the rhythm of the rock and roll, see what the music reminds us of, see what it brings up from our heart and soul. I mean, it takes a lot of forms and fa formats, doesn't it, in this old rock and roll reality? It really does, and sometimes it seems really dark. Please to meet you, won't you give my name? That kind of stuff. Hi, where the hell? Oh, baby. So that we can see and experience our paradise, you know. See through the illusion of the bullshit. The pure li living love and everything that is, including you and me too. And the divine presence is all about us, which are our family. Not just our friends. I mean, you know how I was talking about how in my younger days I felt a kinship with some of the other folk in town that, you know, others found less than desirable, but I found a certain honesty there that I thought was brilliant. And I really appreciated it. You know, I really did. I mean, I admired these people, you know. I was a bit of a test even for them because I wasn't taking shit from nobody. <laughs> I was a bad boy, you know, a little punker. Had to be survival don't you see but these kind of people got me through and set me free you know help me find real life quite naturally you know it takes time it ripens and on the vine just like the fruit does the grape you use man that makes such good wine and babies don't whine no more i'm tired of this whining and shit you know if you're not happy with it let it change get happy get content inside yourself because you know you are it's what you're made of the contented love, you know. That's what we metaphorically represent here when two people gather together and actually in this, as a third party of the third part, a baby comes about, you know. It's that same cosmic love that makes that happen, you know, that just automatically is there because it's love and it's real essential that if we're going to live and die, we keep replicating ourselves so the flow can continue through the bloodstreams and keep helping itself along, you know. There's a singularity of thought in that. There's a singular moment. There's a real divine reputation, representation in such moments as recreation. But see, now we're like 
flowing back into the colors of the rainbow, man. Becoming a part of the rainbow once again. Letting that be our colorful life and the life we're living in and the creation that surrounds us. Real simple, man. Live in that and see where it takes you, baby. Ooh, it'll recreate you. And how? See what I mean about getting your hand out to plow and not having to push anymore? Not having to fight for it. Living in the flow. It's called living in the rainbow, man. The rainbow of creation and the love that's alive in all of it. And happily so. That's the childlike presence. Sometimes it might be hidden in your reptilian skin. Who knows? Wherever it is, don't worry about it. That's where it's been. And how. It's here now. It's alive and how you're going to find yourself having a lot more fun today, let me tell you. You're going to feel a whole sense of freedom inside you ain't felt before. It's just another level, but it's a tripping one. Because, you know, it's a wowser Wednesday, so we have to wows you out of it a little bit, right? So this day is going to be divine in the dancing sort of way. You might have to negotiate around it a bit. Let it negotiate around you this time. You're the flow of life in motion. You don't have to create resistance to yourself or resistance to anything. Just be the flow. And no one can resist it. The current takes it down, man. It always does. Steady as you please. And if it needs to go off in a new direction this life, well, guess what? It creates its own channel. The river of life, the rivers, great rivers of life do this all the time. And the river of life runs wherever it will and flows into all life living. Because that's the source of the life, is in the waters of life. That's where the light inherits love, inherits its love and begins to experience it in an emotional sort of way. The e-oceanal sort of way, really, it's the ocean of emotion. The feeling flow, and when you become, combine that with the sands of materiality and the glittery glow of the sunlight, well, you've got the human being. A feeling machine. Yes, indeed. I said machine, but in a loving sort of way, like a love machine. Don't you get it? You're designed to feel, to flow with feeling, to glow with feeling, to be the feeling that's in all of creation. To be that essential childlike happiness that it's so mature about it. I mean, it's got the wisdom of the universe in its innocence. You think we got problems and difficulties here? Not for a minute. And I say so here dealing with my own. It's been crazy. This retrograde energy is kind of gnarly, but it's all working out today now, ain't it? We're phasing in, babies. There's a smoother flow. We don't have to go with the flow of the old magnetic world. It don't pull us along no more. We in the flow of creation, baby. We rocking. We rolling. We flowing with that mighty river of love. Which flows into the creation through us, around us, to us. I mean, it is the love that we are. It's a liquid thing, baby. And the liquidity is the emotion, the glittery glow of the rainbow. See, got to have rain to make a rainbow now, don't we? little crystalline love, anybody? A little clarity? A little of undividing the reality and seeing how it really is. I mean, the rainbow is not just a few separate colors now, is it? They're united. It's a transformation of light into the feeling of love and the beautiful rainbowic experience of it. You see, these are the essential primary colors. That's what they're called, man. And they come from where? The rainbow and the earth. Because the earth replicates them in her colorful way. Just like we do. See, we're all a product at the end of the rainbow, which is the beginning of the rainbow, which is the flow of creation into a rainbow of creation. That this little rainbow is as grand as they get in this sky here just begin to suggest to us. These are the gateways of paradise, don't you see? The rainbow is. It's understanding the rainbow. It's why the hippies were called the rainbow children. We believed in the rainbow. When I used to grandfather over the uh, barter fair there in Rouge, Oregon, down uh, near Jacksonville, Oregon, Medford, Ashland, that area, there was like 40,000 fun little hippies gathering to 
share the wealth of the harvest there right at the first weekend of October for years on end. And I partied there for a number of years, man. Had my own little stage and everything, my own little platform, I should say. I wasn't performing. I was just being and smoking down with the people and just partying and having a great time. It was always beautiful. But always there would be this triple rainbow on the final Sunday that afternoon. I mean, there was always a little drizzly rain roll in. With the sunlight still shining through it, of course, and bam, there's a triple rainbow up over that mountain for like three or four or five years in a row. I can't remember, but I mean, it was pretty regular. It was almost like you could set you, well, it was various times, but it was always in the daylight and usually around the middle to the afternoon, but sometimes a little later, sometimes a little earlier, but always that misty rain too. And it, did, it wasn't the kind that soaked you to the bone, it's the kind that just damped you down a little bit, refreshed you, because it's like, you know, still a little, uh, uh, well, it's cleansing, you know, you're in need of it, you know, it's a, 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 uh, like a baptismal thing in a sense where the rainbow blesses you with its liquid love and purifies your view of the life you're living. You see, that's the gateway to paradise, that triple rainbow. When you see it in three, then you know you're living in paradise. You know, you can step right through by flowing with it. By accepting the reality of the triple rainbow, not just two. Not just one, it'll never do. Three is one and then it's you. You're the one that the three are made of. You see? <laughs> the three come together inside of you. That's the rainbow of creation. That's how all of us live. That's our function here. That's what such moments suggest and also share with us. You wouldn't believe the magic that's been. But look at the magic of now and how you experience it because it's there. It lives. Moments like that are created to be living forever and they are. And we are right along with them in our earthy sort of way as we blossom from this earth into the experience of the reality around us. See, our, our petals are, our flower plant petals are creation that we live in. The world, the universe, and everything that's in, upon, around, through. Living in it, man, everything that is. Of course, that's the rainbow. You see, that's the vast nature of your own wild character. That's why you feel so liberated in it sometimes, yet so imprisoned by it too, you see. Because you just couldn't allow it to be. It's way too magic, you know, way, way too magic and powerful to be that, to be that truth. Better to go chase down the wicked witch and deal with your demons that way, right? Uh-uh, uh-uh. That time's gone now. We long since stepped a bucket of water on her head, man. You know, she's okay. she come back another way, man. Maybe she'll be a flying, happy flying monkey herself this time. Or maybe she'll be the hottest chick in the universe, except for the good witch of the North Coast. <laughs> Gotta give it to her, baby. She's the answer to all. She's the remedy, you betcha. She's the remedy to the riddle of life, man. When you see her smiling face behind everything you've lived in and all the yellow brick road you've traveled, well then, baby, you catch on. Yeah, she's always there, man. That golden light of love that creates the rainbow in the first place. The sunlight passing through her, because it is her. See, we're all like that. You can see the good witch glowing in the gold light. You got yourself going on too, baby. And the Wicked Witch again does, a, does a, a redo of a redo of a redo and goes down once again, the bucket of water, saying, wow, purify yourself, baby. I will, I will, I will. <laughs> and down she goes. And up comes the rose, the flower of love. See? That's how you be. It's all about seeing what you see, seeing what you always have, always have and always will be. But that's what you've forever been in this moment of now and how. So says Grandpa Coyote, mm, spreading those wings, baby, fluffing them up too. Getting you ready for some real action now, babies. Yeah. If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow. 